fun. What's up, everyone? Happy Thursday, happy Friday Eve. I may change this to the the Friday Eve reviews, maybe. I don't know. That's my new favorite term. Wednesday is like Thursday Eve or Friday Eve Eve. That's how I've been referring to it at work. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's, that's too far. Maybe it's unnecessary. I don't know. Well, my name is Judge James. This is Living for Crits, and we are here for a Thursday Night Review. Tonight is the third part of a three-part unboxing review retrospective on Harley Stroh's incredible Peril on the Purple Planet box set for Dungeon Crawl Classics. And uh, last week, I covered the namesake adventure out of this box, Peril on the Purple Planet itself, as well as the other adventures that are tucked inside of this, this amazing gem. And today, the very last one of these, well, actually not, and I'll tell you why in a second, but the last of this three-parter, uh, I'm going to be covering uh, these little guys here, which is the Rock Awakens, and uh, Synthetic Swordsman of the Purple Planet. And these are, uh, if this is uh, Adventure Module DCC 84, number 84, because all the DCC modules are numbered, this is 84.1 and 84.2. Uh, I've run both of these. Uh, I ran Synthetic Swordsman on Monday of this week to get it done in time before this show. I, I, run, I ran Rock Awakens, a few years back as part of the big campaign that we did in 2017, 18, 19. It was over an 18 month period. And um, I have a lot of great things to say here, I, I think. I don't know, we'll, we'll see what you think. I also wanna talk about how to DCC the Purple Planet. When I say that, I mean, like how do you do it with the other CCs, like Mutant Crawl Classics or DCC Lankmar? Could you take your characters from those campaigns and how would you make it work? Because the the box in itself kind of assumes that you're running this with core dungeon crawl classics. That I mean there's no fleeting luck assumed. Um, the relics aren't quite the same as artifacts from Mutant Crawl Classics. So if you wanted to inject one of those, how would it look? So we'll talk about that tonight in a, a few minutes here. Uh, my rules that I am abide by for uh, all of these reviews will be I have to own the product, I have to have read the product, and I have to have run it or used it in a game. If it's going to be a supplement, I want to have have had some experience with it at the table, and if it's an adventure, I want to have run it and finished it. Um, that's important. Always open to suggestions, but there is... Um, I noted a, a few seconds ago that this won't be the last time I'm talking about the Purple Planet. And that's because there's two other adventures that got missed here. And because they don't abide by, they don't follow my rules. The one just came today, and this is Sky Masters of the Purple Planet, which I have read through briefly today. Hey, Jonathan's on. What's up, Jonathan? Jonathan it was, it was screaming Otto, who died on the Purple Planet. He's here to, he's live. Look at that. Um, Sky Masters is a level six adventure by Jim Wobbler that I have not run yet. And there was no way I was squeezing this adventure in this week. Uh, having read this, this is an easy two to three part adventure, I, I feel. Uh, this, this is, and it looks pretty darn cool. This feels a lot to me like Space 1889 or, or John Carter of Mars. Uh, and even, even more so, because there's airships and stuff and flying around, which is really cool. So I'm, I'm, maybe I'll run this this summer. We'll bring the, the crew back and try that out. The other adventure, which I will be able to talk about soon, is DCC 94, which is Neon Knights, which is uh, an adventure by Brendan LaSalle that doesn't start on the Purple Planet, but goes to the Purple Planet. So I think this is one, I'm running this at DCC days in a few weeks. So I might be discussing this one with you all very shortly. So we'll be back at the Purple Planet here soon, I promise. Uh, I've enjoyed discussing the Purple Planet just because I've had just so many good memories of my adventures here, or my players' adventures here. I have to live vicariously through them. And it's a great place to talk about. 
So, so that's that's coming. So let's discuss the Rock Awakens first, okay? And uh, I don't think we'll be as long this week as you were last week. Rock Awakens is a fourth level adventure by Terry Olson with a cover by Doug Kovacs. I'll just get to the way. All the covers are the same for these, um, whether it's The Rock or Synthetic or Sky Masters. So all the covers are the Doug Kovacs cover that you'll find on the box set itself. It's all the same cover, just a miniature version of it. Uh, so this is uh, by, by Terry Olson, and uh, the cartographer on this is Mark Allen. Uh, Dak Altamac edited this, and the interior artists were Brad McDevitt and Stefan Pogue. And this was described by Terry as a half city crawl, half dungeon crawl, designed to be a convention one shot. Also works really good as a side quest for a main campaign. Now, for both The Rock Awakens and for Synthetic Swordsman of the Purple Planet, I will be injecting many spoilers. This is really for GMs and judges uh, to be th this this episode. So don't don't watch if you're be playing. I screwed my hair up. I gotta poof it out a bit more. This is the look. This is the look of 2020. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. I don't know why I'm doing this, but this is just how... Uh, this is tw this is my 2020 look. It's like Doc Brown, but not gray. <laughs> or someone... One of you called it Bozo the Clown, and I'm okay with that. And I'm very, very happy to have the Bozo the Clown hair. I got crap for, for the, the one day I had combed it back. So, uh, all right. Uh, it, the whole point of this adventure is the whole story is of this this rock, this living rock. And again, spoiler: that thing there is the living rock. It is a a the, a tentacle giant uh, living black stone uh, creation that a city was built on top of. And this this it, it kind of arcs over the city, and it and it makes some shade. Uh, as the adventure uh, takes place and the party investigates the ruins of this city, the rock begins to awaken. There's an awakening mechanic that has to do with spells being cast. So, uh, start to finish, uh, spoiler, it wakes up and it's going to fly off at some point. And as a judge, you get to kind of play around with, you know, uh, with that. And that's, that's a, that's, that has an, it's a it's a very bizarre and weird scene. It's one of those moments. This giant living rock felt very Numenera to me. Um, so the, there's on the city part. Uh, the city is fairly dangerous. We lost Ductive the Kith in our game to a three-headed adder in a temple. Um, there's not a lot of gear, swag, treasure in the city. So as the players explore, they're gonna want to. You know they're gonna want to go deeper and deeper into this adventure and down into the structure that's underneath the stone dome. Uh, and when they do, there's like laser drones that blast them, and there's you know all kinds of uh, uh, cool uh, things to interact with. Some more monsters to deal with. There's a very interesting and I felt fun um, panel that they have to like activate uh, and figure their way around. And that's that was a uh, handing this to the players to deal with and figure out was a was a good time. Um, so and eventually they 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 they're gonna wake this thing up, turn this thing on, and 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 it gets to start moving. And the party you know now has this traveling uh, you know uh, living stone that it flies off to the ancestor peaks at the end of the adventure and the party there's a subplot that that suggested the party can go to the ancestor peaks follow it maybe find something that can navigate it and this could be a potential way home i guess if your players uh one way to use this adventure is if your players are doing the main campaign and they're kind of striking out on using green on the greenstone hunt maybe they aren't strong enough or, or don't feel powerful enough to go to either of the cities uh, on the map, the Kith cities, to to uh, find the green stones they need to bring back. Or maybe they have used the green stones in, in battle because you can take a green stone, one of the full green stones you need to complete the main adventure, and you can use it to spell burn just very powerfully so. Maybe they've done that and they 
don't have an obvious way home. This gives you a way to get your party home from the Purple Planet without, you know, like legally, <laughs> without like going uh, going outside of canon, I guess. I mean, you're, you're a GM, you can do whatever you want, but this gives you a path to doing that. So it's a great convention adventure, uh, real fun romp, uh, you know, deadly, uh, very deadly adventure, especially for fourth level character. We were a split third and fourth level party so, and uh, the, the, if I would say we, we took about three play sessions to finish this, and they were about two and a half hours to three hours. And they did a lot of the adventure. If you were doing this in a con setting, it can be done. I would just really move the party forward. Our party really got stuck and slowed down in exploring the city in the very beginning. And they explored everything in the city. So... Anyway, this is a, a, a pretty easy pickup and purchase, it's like 10 bucks. If you see it at a con, well, when's that gonna happen next? If you see it online, go ahead and get it. This is a good one. <clears throat> All right. Synthetic Swordsman of the Purple Planet by Jim Wampler. Uh, Cartographer is Mark Allen. Dak Ultimac edited this, and Stefan Pogue and Michael Wilson were the artists behind this. Maybe because this is a Jim Wampler adventure, this feels very Mutant Crawl Classics to me. And just because I know that he is a notorious, like, TPKer and player killer, this definitely feels like Jim Wampler to me. Uh, so I ran this on Monday as a reunion adventure for the party, for, for many of the players that were in this campaign previously. And I had them go back to the Purple Planet on a shard shuttle that I created. It was a spaceship sent by the God Emperor because the Purple Planet is dying. And I decided that, you know what, the God Emperor Razul is kind of treating the Purple Planet like Dune, like uh, bring the shard, the Greenstone shards back and using this to power his empire. So it's, it's like Dune, except for instead of spice, you know, it's the Greenstone Shards. So I even had there be a navigator to take the party there um, at using the Shards instead of the Spice. Uh, and But instead of like inhaling the Spice in a big, vast uh, um, container, I, I had the navigator break the Spice up and like snort it, like snort rows of it like he's Tony Montana from Scarface. Because that's the way you do DCC is you have, you know, the... The greenstone shards are cocaine. I don't know. Um, so I I have a, a, a own description of this adventure. Um, my description of this adventure it's a it's it's a very exotic uh, uh, it's a very very exotic facility crawl. Not a dungeon crawl. You're in like a sci-fi facility. Bookended by a pair of likely TPKs, total party kills. Because the encounter very early on in this adventure and the encounter towards the end of this adventure are murderous. They are, they will knock your players out. I would, it says level five. Man, I would want six fifth level characters at this adventure. And I want to make sure I have at least two wizards. And these better be like real, like, like, I don't know, evoker wizards. People with like, you know, casting magic missile and fireball, that is what you want. The elf we had in the party on Monday, uh, Frank played a great elf, uh, but the elf he had, he, he, I did random spells and none of his spells are really offensive in nature, except for one of his spells he got from Malak the Dark Creeper, his patron. Other than that, uh, this really could have gone poorly for the players uh, in, in many ways. Uh, the way the adventure starts off is they, the, the party goes to this biosphere plant to try to fix the atmosphere on the purple planet. And when they get there, the, the first encounter is with 15 of these things called Synthakith. And the Synthakith can only be killed if all of their limbs are chopped off via a special critical table. That, you know, it, when you crit this thing on an 18 to 20, not a 20, uh, when you crit these things, you roll on this crit table. And there are seven options. And one's decapitation. But even on a decapitation, the things continue to fight. Now, they're only a plus two bonus to hit, and they have an 11 armor class. But rules is written, these Synthakith, and there's 15 of them, these Synthakith, when they get a lucky hit, their swords are doing... 
uh, a a a d8 plus a d12 plus two, and their lightning spears doing three d6 plus two damage. And there's fifteen of them. So with that said, the party had a really hard time getting through them at first, if not for a really clutch casting of uh, the party's elf, the creating all these vines and brambles, holding on to these kith by their legs while the party ran back outside, got on their shuttle, turned their shuttle's engines around, and blasted out that area with their shuttle's engines. So which was a good idea, I have to say, for the players, but it was kind of a weird way to finish a battle. They had been fighting those things for about 40 minutes before they just figured that one out. So it was a long fight. Now, in the middle of the adventure, the, the, the party went through, they explored different areas in the... Uh, the in in the facility um you know they found more synth kit but only armed with daggers not terribly deadly but hard as hell to kill again they have to chop all of their limbs off or enough limbs to make them less effective um for for you know for this the, the them to defeat these things uh our, and our party acted strangely in this a little bit on the map i'll show you the map um, in the map, the, the party starts here, and they there's the uh, they have to end up up here. But they can just walk the whole way down the hall, essentially, and get to the end of the adventure, which you can't finish until you go back in the middle and explore. So we had to do that, and there's like you know different rooms to explore and, and different sciency things to figure out. Uh, but then the party met up with with Sar Savatha, which is the other TPK in the adventure, which is this ascended master in one of the last rooms. It's just a TPK machine. So this this jabroni here, he's got plus 10 his initiative. He gets, his AC is only 12. Um, he has, uh, I'm sorry, no, it's 16. I'm sorry, it's 16. Um, so his AC is 16, uh, and he can fight with a saber, doing a D14 plus two damage, and a dagger doing a d4 plus 2 damage, or psionic powers. He gets 4 actions per round, and he can do his attacks or his psionic powers. And it doesn't say how many psionic powers he can't, can and can't do. He has the same synthetic body issue that the other synthetic kith have, which means he doesn't die until all his limbs are gone. His head can pop off and skitter about doing psionic powers, and also gets 4 actions, and has his own 11 hit points. Um, and its powers are brutal. So first off, he has these force fields, and they only they can withstand twenty five points of damage. But he has he can do it four times. So you know essentially he's a hundred extra hit points to chew through. He can create illusions that can that can cause damage to people. He can regenerate three d twelve hit points per round per um, per round four times in a twenty four hour period. But the most brutal thing is he has a domination ability. And instead of the players getting to roll against the domination, a will save, um, he gets to do his attack roll against the player character's personality score at a d20 plus 10. And it doesn't say I can't dominate more than once. So, I mean, I could have been a complete jerk, had him do four dominations in a round maybe, I don't know, and then just dominate, 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 dominate. I never did that. Uh, I guess I would. I was typically throwing up domination and force field generation to regenerate the the, the hit points uh, from that. So I don't know. I, I thought that was a really tough encounter. The players, the way they got around that encounter uh, was essentially the party's elf uh, went ahead and used the Miracos and Tropic Maelstrom and turned him to tin, uh, which was amusing. But he had to burn out all of his luck to get like a thirty four on the result. His luck. His uh, spell burned. I mean, just into a husk. So it wasn't a one shot, but it was like a, a rare shot because we'll probably see that character again. But he needs some good healing. Um, there are several ways to complete the final sequence of this adventure. It's a good adventure. Um, definitely still a con adventure, I would feel, and I would want a full table of fifth level characters. We had a really weird mix of players for this. We had an elf, a paladin from Crawl uh, Zine, a thief, a manimal, and a kith. So I, I think with a cleric, a warrior, and a wizard added to the party, I think it would have probably gone a little differently. So worth playing through. Uh, worth it just to get that TPK if you're a judge that's looking to kill off all your players because they've been bothering you. That's a good adventure for that. So I'd say for TPK judges, 
um, you know, the world unite. That's a great adventure for you to throw your players. Um, anyway, all right. So as we're closing down here, you know, a little comfortable here. Um, let's talk about Purple Planet with use in other systems of Dungeon Crawl Classics. So you have. We'll discuss Mutant Crawl Classics, Star Crawl, X Crawl, and DCC Lankmar. Now, I'll get X Crawl out of the way first. Now, I'm not going to talk about the X Crawl Kickstarter or any of that stuff here. I'm talking if you are just using X Crawl out of the materials available. Like, I mean, I have an X Crawl campaign every Tuesday, and I, I'm trying to find ways to use other kinds of, um, you know, uh, adventures in X Crawl. And the ruins themselves uh, in X Crawl, all those ruins that are in that one ruins, uh, it, uh, book of ruins in here, each one of those could be a potential crawl. So you could, I mean, I would say that for, where is it here? Let me grab it. Um, for lost tombs of the ancients, so I guess they're tombs, not ruins. For, for this here, each of these tombs is the length of a decent sized crawl. So the tomb of Sotark the Destroyer. I could I could turn this into Dungeon Battle Columbus, you know, just reskin a few things in there. The Tomb of the Immortal Call. That's Dungeon Battle Harrisburg. Um, so I mean, you could just take these and reskin them if you want to do something X crawly with that. Um, and, and I'm hoping that when the Kickstarter's out, you know, it, it would make some sense. Uh, but there's no reason why you couldn't put that together. Uh, for Mutant Crawl Classics, the challenge for doing this adventure, for doing uh, Peril on the Purple Planet with uh, Mutant Crawl Classics is relics and artifacts. Now, if you've listened to me talk on Glowburn, you've probably heard me cast a little shade uh, on humans in that game, on the sentinels, the healers, the shamans, and the rovers, in that they're nowhere near as cool or as powerful as their mutant brethren, the manimals, the mutants, and the plantians, because they're not. Um, in and of themselves, those character classes are, you know, way weaker, unless they are totally outfitted with artifacts. And the reason why you do that is human characters in general are much better at using artifacts than manimals, mutants, or plantians are. So, you know, they really should have the bulk of the artifacts because they have nothing else to use except for, you know, basic attack rolls. Uh, so, in Mutant Crawl Classics, there's no artifacts to be found. There's no cells, no C cells to be found, uh, uh, or anything else to power your your devices. You know, uh, you have greenstone shards, and you've got relics, which you figure out by using the relic runes. So, if you were going to use MCC, I would suggest throwing in some artifacts, possibly, uh, maybe a crash landed ship here or there. Uh, alternatively, I would suggest utilizing artifact checks to help characters understand the rune codes faster. Uh, or, or maybe the uh, humans are more adept at using relics. So relics, like, a, like, a, like a, a ray rifle, a sentinel could use it and get two charges for every greenstone shard or something like that, or an extra charge because they're more efficient at using them. You're going to have to find something to make the humans more effective. Manimals and mutants and plantains will have no problem. Uh, it's going to be the the humans having an issue. For Starcrawl, if you happen to have Starcrawl and you want to use Starcrawl with this, uh, the, the, it's going to be, do you have a ship or not? If you're playing the game where the party has access to a spaceship, a lot of this adventure can be pretty easy. You could do away team missions down, and that could be fun, but you're going to lose out on all the all the hex crawling. So, I mean, I would say the Rock Awakens or Synthetic Swordsman of the Purple Planet, those would be both great away mission style uh, adventures for Star Crawl. But, uh, I mean, if I was going to do it, I would just crash land the players on there and just run the adventure as is. It would work fine. All right. DCC Lankmar is the last thing to think about here. You will need to recalibrate for a lack of carousing to get hit points back. So corral, I'm just get luck back. I'm sorry. The party's going to spend luck to get hit points back, and they're going to want to carouse to get their luck back. And if you don't have a way to, you can't carouse in the Purple Planet. There is no carousing uh, unless you're like, I don't know if I want to go carousing in Castellum Cotsis with all those kith. 
I wouldn't want to do it. Maybe your players would. But, you know, keep in mind, a lot of the adventure takes place nowhere near any kind of civilization. So you're going to want to have a, some way for them to get their hit points back and their luck back. And maybe it's through the mushrooms. Uh, maybe it's through moon milk. They get them back through moon milk, possibly. Uh, you're going to have to find something to get them this hit point, that luck back and the hit points back. But it's not that hard to do, and you could pull it off. All right, so overall, if you are a Purple Planet completist, you have to have these adventures. Just I'm just telling you now, go get them. Um, I, I hope you enjoyed this three-parter. Uh, I certainly enjoyed going back and exploring everything on the Purple Planet again and reading through everything again. Uh, I, I appreciate you all for sticking through and, uh, and watching these videos here. I hope that one day I can do something just like this, but for the Chain Coffin. Uh, I still have not finished the Chain Coffin, so one day possibly. Uh, next week, I'm not sure what I'm going to cover. I might go out for a week and cover something that has nothing to do with DCC. I might do a Shadow of the Demon Lord adventure next week. Uh, I might do a Shadow of the Demon Lord product. Maybe I'll do a Numenera product. I, I haven't decided what I'm doing next week. Um, and then Sunday this weekend, Judge Eve and I'll be back for our Living for Crit show. And that should be fun. I hope you all enjoyed my mom and dad being on last week. I had a good time with that and so did they. So uh, to wrap up, please like, comment, and subscribe on YouTube. Spread the word on our Twitch and YouTube channels. And I'm going to wrap up now, maybe for always, with a Die Rodney uh, just uh, as a as a way to to memorialize our, our our good friends who lost their lives on the purple planet. So have a great night and uh, take care of each other.